second now. Should be starting any time. Here it goes. Okay. Is it live? We is it are live. It's live? It's okay. live. All right. Let's hope this one works, hey? Eh? Yeah. All right. See you, everybody. We're here. Hey, everyone. We're here. It's Karen at Urban White and Todd, and we're just uh, just making sure everything's up and running, and then we'll kind of get started in a minute or two here. Um, just making sure I've got everything all set up. If you're popping on, give us a hello or a thumbs up just so we know everything's working. How's the sound? Good. Sounded good? Okay. Sometimes there's a bit of a lag, so it's kind of hard to know when people are coming on. Mm -hmm. The lag's about 20-some seconds. 20 seconds? Yeah. And, you know, and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see how many people are going to play hooky at work. <laughs> It takes a minute or two. Mm -hmm. Is it showing up on yours yet, Sharon? Yeah. Yeah. Is it showing me? She's waving. Oh, okay. All right. So I guess we are connected. Is there anyone else on there, though? Is it smooth, Karen? Or Sharon? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. We're testing things out. So we're trying this during the day, so it gives us lots more time to uh, fix anything should it go awry again like last week. Mm -hmm. So does it show how many people are on, or...? No? Uh, viewers, five. Okay, so we do have some people on. All right, so I guess we'll get started. we got five sure. people who are willingly playing hooky from work or before they pick up their kids I'm from school. I'm watching and working. Watching and working. Car Carolyn. <laughs> Multitasking. Good job, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's Karen here at Urban White, and Todd is on our tech, and we've got Sharon working in the store, and we have customers in the store as well, so this should be interesting. Um, today we are working on our... Um, farmhouse wagon or what did higher. we up higher yeah. higher higher higher, higher, there you go. higher. There seasonal you go. wagon um, this one is showing our valentine kit but we're actually just going to be showing or i'm going to be demonstrating how to actually make the wagon this little sucker here um, it's very easy to do but sometimes it's just a little bit easier with a tutorial so i guess when you're ready there todd you want to switch to the down yeah. screen mm -hmm. all right we're good. We're good? Okay, so this is what would come in your kit when you order a um, seasonal wagon with an insert kit. Like I said, today we're just working on the wagon itself, which is uh, very easy to do, but I'm going to show you some really cool tricks to go with it to make it a little bit easier as well. I've gone ahead and I've pre-painted my wheels because we started this last week, and after a few meager attempts, <laughs> a few swear words later, uh, <laughs> not too many, um, anyway, so we thought we'd try it again today. So I did paint these, um, and now I'm going to show a really easy way to get the faux wood look on the wagon itself. Now in your kits we had talked about uh, you have the foam daubers. These are really good for applying paint to the wheels and the handle pieces, which is what these are that are black. We won't need these anymore today. and. I've also got glue which comes in your kit and we usually use this for applying the glue um, but you could also do it from this because it's kind of like a, these are technically lip balm applicators so they have an angled end but I like to use these for detail but for getting the paint on our wagon we're actually going to use wet wipes if anyone has any questions please feel free to ask Todd will read them out to me and I will try and answer them as quickly as I can. I be in mind there is a bit of a lag, so sometimes when you ask a question, it might take a minute or two mm -hmm. for, for me to answer. So, yeah. so there's whoever's on there, say hello. Tell me where you're from. I know we have one person who's playing hooky, or I mean multitasking at work. Michelle says working good. All right, perfect. Thank <laughs> you, Michelle. So I'm just going to take a little bit of brown paint. Now this would come in your kit in a little container. Um, so you just pour some on like a, a styrofoam plate or a plastic lid of some kind. And I'm using um, baby wipes. These work really quite well. If you have household wipes, I would recommend wringing them out really good before using them. 
because they are really wet and we don't want this to be saturated because we are working on MDF. So it's kind of a balance between the dampness of this and also um, the paint. So I'm gonna take my wet wipe and I'm gonna bunch it up a little bit and dab it in my paint. And then I'm just going to wipe it on. Now I'm not putting on a ton of paint. I want this to have kind of a wood grain look. So a nice light application. It's okay if you put it on a little choppy at first because it is hard to get it all, but then do a nice wide wipe at the end to kind of get it, um, any grain, faux grain sort of look going from end to end. And if you're using our Fusion chocolate paint, you may notice that it has a bit of a purpley tone to it when you're first putting it on. Don't panic, it will dry brown. And now with these, uh, well, I'll do these little guys too. These are the ends. Okay. Now these I usually uh, just do one coat on, but you are going to want to do both sides. because you're going to see both sides. No matter which way you hold the wagon, you will probably see, oh, you'll see the, this inside and the outside. The only thing you probably don't have to do the bottom on is the, the actual bottom of the wagon, but for those of us with OCD or obsessive crafting disorder, you may want to do the bottom. I won't judge you. Okay, so I have these pieces. This is the bottom piece. These are the ends. This is the one where the handle will go in. And then these are the slats on the side. And I find it easiest to actually push them all together. I'm just gonna find a clean spot on my wet wipe, cleaner. If you bunch them all together and then wipe them all at once, it's much faster than doing them all individually. This is when I wish I was ambidextrous so I didn't have to cross over my arms, but. You can see the pink was on really easy with the wet wipe. If you could see that there, my arm keeps on covering over top of it. All right, and then just some nice wide swipes. And then before this completely dries, I would recommend separating these a little bit while they dry. Otherwise they do tend to stick together and they're kind of like breaking apart Kit Kat bars if they manage to get glued together with the paint. So now I'm gonna let this dry. It only will take a few minutes. And while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'll see if anyone has any questions. Does anyone have any questions, Todd? No. No, everyone's quiet? Because Every, everyone's trying to work and, and do their <coughs> wa watching the video at the same time. Mm -hmm. We will be saving this on the Facebook page and then also sharing it to the Create at Home Facebook page uh, or group, I guess it's a group over there for all the different um, projects. We'll have lots of tutorials over there. So we will be saving this. For those of you who might not be able to have watched it during the day today, we'll have it saved for you. All right, so this is just about dry. And again, this one I did paint both sides because I never quite know where we're at in the filming process. And get my little applicator handy because we're gonna need that in just a minute because we're going to start by gluing the wheels on our base pieces here. So with whatever would be, if this was the inside, have it pointing down because our wheels are going to be going on pointing up. It's going to be wheels up. We'll flip it over after. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my glue. Once your board is dry, take one of your wheels some glue just on the sides so on either side there you don't need to put it on top because otherwise it could glue onto your surface so a little bit of glue on there and then I'm just going to pop them in the slot so it looks like that and if any glue bubbles out there just wipe it off the little bit of white that's left there will dry clear but I don't want any bumps on there so I try to wipe off the glue a little bit of glue on. That's probably about enough. 
needs to be white so you can actually see it. If it goes on and it's clear, it's probably not enough glue. It's easier to do with two hands. How's everybody's day going? Did you have a good weekend? Today's our, today's our Monday. So for those of you who've already been at work for a day, don't hate us for having Mondays off. <laughs> Today is our Monday. All right, and again, wipe off any of the glue that pops out the side because I don't want to see any bumps on there. On the inside, it's not so much a big deal. And then putting in my last wheel. Now this glue will dry clear, like I said, but it also dries fairly fast. Because we're working on MDF, it dries very quickly because MDF is very porous, so it soaks in quite a bit of the glue. And there's my last wheel going in there. Okay, again, wipe off the last bit. Now, one thing to make sure of is that your wheels are actually going on straight because there's nothing worse than having a wagon where the wheels are pitched in, like, like bow-legged, but on a wagon. So I like to tip it. Can it focus on that okay, Todd? Yeah. Is it seeing that? So just to make sure that your wheels are, are um, straight to each other, because if they're tipped in like that, it's not going to do any good. So make sure they are straight. And I like to give it about five minutes or so to dry. And you may want to check back on it periodically in that five minutes just to make sure they haven't started to wander in because once it dries, it is, it's on there. It's not going anywhere. So I'm going to set this one aside, I think. Oh yeah. And then I'm going to grab this guy because through the miracle of modern filming, I have another one ready. So this one, my wheels are dry and I have flipped it over and I have since glued in these two end pieces. Now, one end is solid, the other end has two little slots in it, and uh, that will form the, the front and the back of your wagon, and that's also where your handle will slide in. Now, I glued this one in just as we were going live, so it is pretty dry. So I'm just going to lay my wagon on its side. I find sometimes this is a little bit easier if the glue hasn't completely dried with these two end pieces, because then if you need to manipulate it, um, to make your wagon straight, it's a little bit easier, but seeing as I want to be prepared, I went ahead and did that. I'm going to run a little bit of glue down the side here too. This is probably one of our more uh, structural projects because you do want it to stay together. So we do want to put a little bit more glue on here than we do on some of our other Pieces like the insert pieces, for example, you don't need to put a ton of glue on them because they are, they're decorative. They're not going to be getting a lot of abuse. Oh, I mean love and abuse, like the wagon will, because we're going to be putting things on and off it regularly. So there's that. So I've got a good little cover of glue on there. I'm going to take one of my side rails and set that on there. And again, anywhere on the ends where the glue has squirt out. Not too worried about the inside. Put a little bit of glue in here. So this little notch here is shaped kind of like a U, so I'm trying to make sure I get glue on all three sides of that. So my rail is securely glued in there. So who all watching here has a wagon kit and have you built it already? If not, now you have no excuse. All right, so again, checking my ends to make sure there's not a lot of glue squirting out. And then I will put this last rail in. And this one's shaped kind of like an L, so I want to make sure I get both sides of that. My head in the way here, or can people actually see Todd? Oh, that's good. Good. <coughs> Eight people on. Eight people? <laughs> well, hello to whoever's popping on. Thank you for joining us today. 
We are working on building our seasonal wagon. So that side, they're all glued on. And by some small miracle, I didn't actually need to adjust the end pieces, which is really good because I had let it dry while I was doing our first intro. Get that some of that glue off my hands. Now this is gonna take a few minutes to dry, but what I would do now at this point is to repeat the process by turning the wagon over and gluing those three rails in as well. Carolyn says, I have one and have gifted three. Everyone loves them, exclamation. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Sharon says, I love my wagon. Can't wait to do another. I think uh, Sharon has the Winter Wonderland one, right? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Isn't that the one you gave her? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to turn this over because I am kind of a patient. Now, you can see some of the white glue on the inside here has bubbled out. I'm not going to worry about that because, A, it's on the inside, and B, it will dry clear. So I'm not too worried about that. Can you see that mm -hmm. on there, Todd? Yeah. So that bit of glue on the inside is probably not going to be a problem. If it's on the outside and it was a big bubble sticking out like that, you probably want to wipe it with your finger just so you don't have that really obvious glob of dried glue on there. So I'm going to turn this over. So we're hoping to put up our St. Patrick's Day wagon insert, hopefully this week. We just have to finish painting the sample for it. How many people here decorate for St. Patrick's Day? Like Valentine's Day seems to be a pretty common one to, to decorate for, but how about St. Patrick's Day? Who here feels lucky enough to decorate for St. Patty's? So we wanna make sure we get some of these kits available for you guys sooner. We're trying hard to get them ahead of the schedule or ahead of the seasons or holidays. So again, I put glue all the way down that side. I'm gonna set this one in. And a little bit more glue on this one. May as well do the top one too while I'm at it. All right. So as you can see, it doesn't take a ton of glue, but you definitely want to put enough on there for it to dry and actually get hold of the wood. And I'm just using my fingers to wipe off the excess where it bubbles out. Oops, bumped that one. Shauna says, now that I have the wagon, I hope to buy the St. Patty's Day kit. Okay. I'm excited about that one. Maybe it'll come with some good luck and it'll bring the spring even sooner, but I don't know. We'll see. All right, so that's all freshly glued, and I'm just going to let that dry now. I also don't need these little guys. And now it's time to put the handle together. And so my, my handle has been painted, like I said. We did these the other night when we were first attempting to do the video. Now these are your little slot pieces, and you want to make sure that they are lined up the same way so that your squares, or actually more like little rectangles, aren't they, where they're pointed in the same direction. And what I like to do is, I'll set that one down, I'll poke one in like that, and then I'll grab my other one, and I always managed to, oh, I actually got it in the right way this time. I usually have to flip them around and flip them around. So you'll end up with two little, they're almost like little prongs, and then the wagon handle. I've got some glue on my hands and I'm leaving glue dust behind. So now I don't glue these in here because once you have it fit into the end of your wagon piece, which is like this, it is going to fit in there nice and snug. Now this you could glue in, but I almost don't see the point because it is quite, it's usually quite a good fit. And I'm just showing here because it's easier than holding up the wagon. But you can leave it flush like this. And if you are going to leave it like that, I would recommend gluing that in. But if you don't want to glue it in because it's easier to take it apart to store if you don't, and then I would just push it in all the way so your little prongs would actually stick um, into the inside of your wagon a little bit further. Now the big debate, sorry, did you have a question? Yeah, there's a question. Okay. Uh, Carolyn, I have the hockey kit. Will you be doing a play ball or soccer one? Oh, we could. Like baseball? 
I'm baseball? I'm thinking so. Play ball okay. probably is baseball. Okay. I can try and find a soccer one, too, or we can come up with one, I'm sure, for all those soccer moms out there. Mm -hmm. I can't be the only soccer mom named Karen, either. So. <laughs> Sharon also says uh, she doesn't usually decorate for St. Patrick's, but I think this year might be the one to start. It might be because we have, we have all these awesome kits to do. <laughs> she may be inspired. <laughs> If you can, for those of you who don't know, Sharon works out in the store here with us. She's my, my weekday girl, and she is also the one who paints most of our samples, actually. So hello to Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so like I said, don't worry about uh, gluing those in unless you really want to. Um, but I think this might be dry enough now that I can lift it up. And I'll show how this would just pop in the end here. And it'll go like that. So that makes a sturdy little wagon, and again, the glue will dry clear. This has a little bit of wiggle on it. And we have had a few people who've actually put in the handle, instead of it pointing up, that it points down. It's a matter of preference, I think. I tend to like my, oh, see, now I can't get it in there. I tend to like, um, I like the look of it better pointed up. But you know, if you wanted to park it with the handle down, you could. Someone is saying a uh, horse's day kit. <laughs> a horse's day. Is there a horse's day? Is there actually a horse's day? Probably. I don't it's know. For I know February, we've got <coughs> family day coming up next month. I think that's the only um, one I can think of that's coming up. Mm. I don't know. There's a day for everything. We could do pancake okay. day if we really wanted <laughs> to, but um, that would be maybe getting a little carried away. But we're, well, we're, we'd love to hear you guys' suggestions for other themes that we can put into the kits as well. Yes. All right, so there's the wagon. Now, when I'm doing my wagon, sometimes the pieces don't fit in there, super sturdy. So we actually will fill the inside of a wagon with some of this crinkle paper, and you can change this out by season as well. And this is something you can either find at Michael's or um, I think the dollar store even has some. Um, and, and it's just nice because it helps hold your pieces up a little bit more solidly because then you can pull the the crinkle paper back and kind of wedge your pieces in, which I find a little bit easier when it comes to displaying them that you can display them in there a little easier. And now for putting the sign on your kits, every time you order an insert kit or even when you get your first kit, it is going to come with these little, um, these are the hangers for holding on the sign. So for example, I have the love sign for this month. And I usually paint these to either match my wagon or you can paint them to match your uh, kit, whichever way you want to do it. But we, we, we do always provide them with every kit because sometimes they do break. And I'm going to show how to put them on. One so side's bigger than the other. One side is bigger than the other. And the, the longer side is the one that actually hooks onto your wagon, like so. You can see that there. And then, one thing that people often make a mistake of doing is when they're putting the sign on, they try to put it on on an angle, which is not the best way to do it because this has a square edge to it. It's actually easier if you put it on straight from the front rather than trying to put it on an angle because that's how they'll break because you're trying to force it in there. So you can put both of the hangers in there and then put it over the edge. And that is the most foolproof way of putting it on. And then you can change it out Flip quite it easily. Flip it around. It's upside down. Oh, there we go. There. Is that better? Sorry, yeah. folks. <laughs> I'm all discombobulated here. <laughs> I guess the way I look at it is the way it's going to be. That's right. Be. Okay. This is a new setup for us with the videos, so hopefully it'll work for you guys. Lots of new angles and stuff. Well, yeah, new angles. We have the overhead camera. We have an on the front camera. And we'll get a wider view. And a wider view so you can see me talking a bit more. Um, and I never quite know what Todd's putting up on the screen there, so hopefully I'm not doing well, anything We have this view of me. Hello. Oh, yeah, there's Todd on our tech. <laughs> <laughs> Techie Todd. Um, yeah, so we can do some fun stuff with the videos and hopefully allow you guys to be able to see what we're doing with the projects a lot easier. So there's our wagon. Hopefully you guys can go ahead and make yours now and be ready for Valentine's Day or whatever holiday you want to put up. Apparently, Horse Day? or St. Patrick's Day coming up. <laughs> when is Horse Day? Do we get an answer on that one? No. <laughs> or I'm guessing it's just someone who loves horses, maybe. 11 viewers? We do have a... F oh, 12 now. We do have a home sweet home with a cow, a chicken, and a pig on it, but no horse. <laughs> but 
All right, so if anyone has any questions, if you want to ask really quickly before I sign off here, we're trying to keep these fairly short and sweet. The overhead is great. The overhead is great? Okay, good. Because I think that's how I'm looking at it when I'm making it, so it probably is a lot easier for you folks at home to see um, how we do it as well. So next week we are going to be filming this little project. This is a new project I just posted today. So next week I'm going to be showing how to assemble this piece, but also how to do um, like this background. If you can see that has kind of a faux barnwood sort of look. Uh, we'll be showing how to do dry brushing on that and also some um, adding extra details in with the uh, pens that we were using last time the Uni Posca pens. So we'll be using those as well. So those are really good for adding uh, details rather than having just a flat painted surface. And I know a few girls who watched the first live video we did, was it last week or the week before? Week before. The week before? Um, loved the pens and I think some of them have even bought the pens now. And I think next week, next week I think we should give some away. Should we give some Posca sure. pens away next week? Yeah, that so good. yeah, so we are going to schedule that event. It'll probably be going up live on the page later today. We'll put it in the in the event section, so you'll be able to see it there. So um, to win a pair of the pens, or a set, set of three pens, I think I have for those. It's the fine, the medium, and the large. Uh, tag a friend when we go live, and and then when they come watch, then we'll put you in the draw, and you could win a set of the pens to use on your own projects. So that's it, I think. That's it? Yeah. Are you okay. on my face or my hands? I'm on just your face now. Okay. All right. So thank you for joining us today, everyone. I hope we made it through the video um, better than we did last week, more successfully. And if you have any questions, still feel free to ask. I'll go on for the next little bit here and try to answer any questions anyone has. And yeah, I think that's probably it. We've got lots more work to do today because I've got a few more kits I want to put on the website, which is good for me and exciting for me. But the